Keeping it moving, our noon slate on ESPN. This is a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be super jacked for this one because ESPN's finally realized that noon slot, with all due respect to uh, the, the Big Ten, we don't want to see Minnesota Northwestern, you know, right at this noon. This Illinois. I don't know. Have you seen the new field Illinois, adjustments? Northwestern's investing. They're adding uh, they, whatever it's called, Kyle Field. They have the new, uh, they're adding some stuff. They're investing more. Hey. It's no disrespect to Beth Moens, but it would always be a Beth Moens game. Like Hold on, Beth Moens is awesome. No, I'm but I'm saying guy. those sleepy Big Ten noon games would seem to always be what follow all the energy. You're like, Hold you're on, you're jacked up. Pam Ward. You're jacked up for game day. Maybe her too. Yeah. You're jacked up after game day, and then you like go to like Illinois, and it's like this quiet crowd, and you're like, oh, yeah, games, football's about to kick off. You're like, oh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll come back at 3 o'clock when the good games start. No. ESPN's like, Fox figured this out with the big noon. Yeah. We're going to do it too. Because people want to watch football right away. Exactly. It makes sense. We're already on ESPN yes. watching game day. Let's go right into a, a nice environment. So with all of that, Kentucky goes on the road to Oxford, Mississippi. And the Ole Miss Rebels are a six-and-a-half-point home favorite over the number seven team in this. the country, yeah. which I also don't think Kentucky is the number seven team in the country. But I will acknowledge that I feel like I always undervalue Kentucky. Like, I just – it's just maybe the way I was uh, – conditioned with college football it's like i know mark stoops is a new era but it's still kentucky and i'm like oh can kentucky go on the road and win a big time sec game they did it against florida a couple weeks ago but i think this Ole miss team is a lot better than florida um maybe not a lot better but i do think they are better but i just like i said about ucla i have no idea what this team is yet just because they haven't played anybody we've essentially seen four dress rehearsals for Ole Miss to begin the season, and now they're going to play a real team. And I I don't see them covering the six and a half. I think this is going to be a really close game because Kentucky just has a way of like making you play their style, like kind of bringing you down in the in the ditch with them. Like they seem to play to everyone, all of their opponents, good and bad. Like Miami of Ohio and Northern Illinois were both close games. Uh, Kentucky had too, but. There's something about Mark Stoops' style, the, the style Kentucky wants to play. I think it travels well, and I don't, I'm, I don't know how good Ole Miss is yet. So I'm going to take Ole Miss to win, but not cover. Give me Kentucky in the points. This was tough, and also Lane Kiffin. I love Lane. Lane is just like the guy has no fear. Like this week, just calling. So I have a quote for you. Did you see what he said about the the fans at Ole Miss? this week no i didn't see that okay lane just he says whatever man and i appreciate it he said quote when you come back out he's talking about the second half uh after this uh their game this weekend when you come at, uh back out run out of the tunnel and it looks like a high school game you can't let that affect you i've tried social media for two years but i'll worry about what i can control not so- a fan that I feel like I've noticed that more and more in college football of just like the the crowd like emptying out around halftime. Well, I can tell is... you one crowd that doesn't do that, and they were in Knoxville, Tennessee this weekend, full checkerboard, even after the game was over, the stands still just completely decked out. Um, as much as it uh, to the chagrin of some Georgia local reporters of uh, fan takeovers that have happened uh, ostensibly in Neyland Stadium over the last year or so. Not I, had a, case, I had a press credential to a UGA game a few years ago and mm. like left, like my phone was dying. So I was like going to my f- car to get a phone charger mm-hmm. and I like knew I could get back in the game. And I'm just seeing like all these people just flooding out at halftime. I'm like, they can't. I like even asked somebody. I was like, they can't get back in the game, right? Like, no, they're just leaving. It's like that's so weird. It, the game. It's like it was like a. I think it might have been the Tennessee game actually, uh, mm-hmm. 2018, and it was like a 2013 game at the half or something. Like it was like not a blowout by any means, but it was a. Uh, What's was the strange. view like at UGA's press box? Is it good? Oh yeah, it's incredible, and I actually I think they're I think they're like moving it because I think it's so good. I think they're gonna turn it into like more like 
uh, box seating like type stuff. Oh, yeah. that sucks. Because the two, it's the two hundred, it's the three hundred level. I think is like the seats that are like right below the press box, and that's mm-hmm. like. That's like the big time. Like that's like the perfect like section you want. It's just hmm. I don't. It's something about how high up you are, but you're like far enough away to see everything. Like it's just, it's pretty it's pretty ideal. I, da- I got to dap up uh, Elijah Holyfield for the game. Like you know, I got you. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad uh, you were able to do that, Mac. I remember this kid. This kid running around the field. Um, hmm got like terry godwin's gloves and like someone else and he had like terry three godwin. pairs of gloves he's like oh look at all the gloves and i was like yo i mean I, uh, let me let me get some of those gloves i want some gloves come on you, you don't even you can't even wear those you're like seven come on man that's great um old miss 15 and 13 or uh, 15 and 3 over the last 18 games matt graham would you like to guess what kentucky is their last 18 games Oh, I think I saw this same stat. Is this it's the same record, right? They are also fifteen and three. Um, I also love this quote from Mark Stoops, who because like the dirty little secret about Kentucky this year, and part of this is just not having Chris Rodriguez, but they have not been able to run the ball at all. Uh, they're averaging something like two point seven yards per carry, I think, to this point. Um, that's just not what Kentucky's ever been is under the mark stoops era is they have been a ground and pound first uh back, dating back to benny snell and guys before that they uh are now a passing team and uh they're relying on their and they have good wideouts like even after losing wandale robinson uh their wideouts made some plays against north illinois and they've looked okay and that's something to monitor that being said he said quote for five years y'all didn't appreciate shit <laughs> in regards to people uh questioning the team not being able to run the football this year and he's like oh now we can't run the football you're concerned that we can't do it after you're yelling at me about passing more and opening up the offense now i can't run the football and uh, you're concerned uh mark stoops hilarious um all that the being exact said situation georgia's in these days now people wanna, yeah they have a good passing offense <laughs> you want to complain about the running game i uh i've gone back and forth i think this was the hardest one to pick for me um matt green and it's now jackson dart's team lane kiffin confirmed luke altmeyer is the number two dart has looked okay the thing that i get go back to kentucky can't pass block either they're not running the football they're i believe last in the sec in sacks uh given up like will levis is running for his life back there uh preparing to do his matthew staffer in the detroit lions because that's who he's just getting compared to so he has to experience just playing behind a bad offensive line before he gets to a the comparison nfl comparison i do not understand they get he gets it all it's the not time even not even the same type of player it's yeah uh, like compared to like josh allen or something if you want not that he's that good but that's yeah. at least more the style he plays I just don't believe in the like the parameters of what Kentucky needs to do to win, and I am going to take Ole Miss, but Kentucky covers. Okay, so we agree on that one. I think it's going to be super close. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a field goal difference, but I just the offensive line sucks. I like Ole Miss's pass rush. I like that there is some certainty now with the quarterback situation. I like that Zach Evans is going to be able to run on this team. And I just don't trust what Kentucky's shown to this point offensively. Like, I just, I don't see it. But I want them to win. Like, I want Kentucky to be as good as humanly possible going into uh, Tennessee weekend. Because it's been nice. Like, Tennessee being right behind Kentucky is just bulletin board material. Like, I need that on, <laughs> I need that on the wall for as long you as possible. You need that? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm only rooting for Kentucky because Ole Miss, these uniforms they're busting out this week with this. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? This white with light blue splotches well that's what lane kevin's been wearing like he wears all this yeah that's that's what their helmets are gonna look like this week and i can't i can't pull for that so you don't like them i think they look pretty no they're awful come to the sit man i am i do not condone (laughs) that and so for that reason i will uh i will be rooting for the wildcats but um